start the message. The message today, as you can see, is I'm um, walking in the daughter. I'm sorry, walking in the office of a daughter and its introduction. I'm going to talk about the foundation to that, and um, it's going to be. Oh, awesome. Thank you. So, Allison, thank you, um, Brittany. I appreciate that. I know you guys probably just moving through, but I just wanted to be able to make sure my volume is good so I could leave this message. Um, I have so many um, messages that I, I have to come on here and to share um, so many things I'm learning. Um, as God had me in this process of working with so many people, you know, like Joel, you and I, some of you know that Joel and I, we have, a, um, we are family and marriage ministers. And as a result, we do several things. We um, minister to people in small groups. Um, we also have um, men and women groups, and we also counsel marriage, marriage married people we do marriage counseling and we also do premarital counseling our premarital counseling program has taken up so i mean it's it's increased so much like so many people are coming for premarital um, counseling and that is such a delight in my heart because god is preparing so many kingdom um, minded individual Awesome. Thank you, Allison. Um, so many um, kingdom minded people preparing them for marriage. Some of them, you know, weren't too sure if they wanted to be married or not, or if they were, you know, if it's a good idea. But after um, going through counseling sessions, they realized not only were they called to, to in the responsibility to be um, married, but that they have the ability to be married. And they, the person that they're choosing is the person that God assigned. You know, God said, this is the person that you guys are going to be having a synergistic um, relationship relationship with to advance the kingdom of heaven. So a lot of people, again, um, people just want knowledge. They just want to know that they, they're doing the right thing. There's a support system. There's solutions to things. You know, people want to know that there's a manual. There's, you know, you know, they're not going to take, go on a road and know that a road of unknown and they fail. A lot of people are afraid of failing, right? And so that's wisdom on their part, in my opinion. So I start off mentioning that um, we are counselors as well, and um, one of the things, uh, also deliverance ministers, and those are some of the things that we do in addition to jobs and stuff like that and running a house, mother, uh, married, and, and, and mother of three children. Um, all those responsibilities, you learn so much when you're walking with God. And um, one of the things I learned quickly was my the off, being in the office of a daughter. Um, when Joel and I was having our struggles in the beginning of our relationship, like I think about six years, no, about eight years into our marriage, it became so difficult. Like I didn't know how to, I had things, I thought I had things under control or I knew what I was doing, but it became so difficult to the point where we knew that we were on the spiritual attack. There was no other answer, no other solution because everything that was happening in our marriage made no sense. It was ab made absolutely no sense. And so that's when I, again, that's when God um, started tugging on my heart um, to show me because I was so broken hearted and I wanted help so badly. And then I, I turned to God, you know, I know he was tugging at my heart, you know, Cheryl and look towards me because I don't think I would have gone unless the Holy spirit was the one showing me. And so what I've learned about being in the, uh, walking in the office of a daughter, I I started learning in the most difficult times of my life. And I felt like I was failing as a mother. I thought I was failing as a wife. At that time, those were the two major things that meant so much to me. We were, I would, Joel and I were doing great in business. Business was a lot of people that are friends and probably knew us from um, business and probably were our business partners um, back in the in the nineteen in nineteen. I'm sorry, in the two thousands, early two thousands to two thousand ten. You are in business with us. You realize you guys know a little bit about us and and um, how successful we were um, building business. That was fine, but when it came to marriage, when it came to family, it was so challenging. That was the most challenging, most difficult thing. So, all of that to say, God in 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 that. Um, season of my life, the most difficult times in my life, that's when I understood who I was in Christ. It didn't take a month. It didn't take a year. It took several years. In fact, it took about probably close to 10 years for me to understand that, right? And of course, he was showing me all the time, but it didn't really click until about 10 years into it. So I'm going to go in uh, and start talking. Since so said the volume is on and good. Welcome, Don. Thank you, um, Brittany. And thank you, Allison. But here we go.
All right. So here the topic starts. So we are daughters of the Most High God. A lot of us know that, right? You know, most of us know that, but do we don't understand it, right? We don't understand what it means to be daughters of the Most High God. Therefore, a lot, how can I tell that? A lot of us don't know, understand it. Why? Because we're not walking in it, right? When we're walking as daughters of God, we don't walk in fear. We walk in love. We walk in power and we walk with a sound mind based on a lot of um, frustration, anxiety, stress, diseases, um, you know, broken marriages, women, single women, women that are um, uh, unsatisfied with life, we can tell that we're not walking in the office of the daughter of God. Because when we walk in the office of daughter of God, then we are not, we're going to succeed in everything we touch our hands to. Right. We're going to be we're going to see blessings everywhere. Everything we put our hands to our marriage, when we become um, when we become mom, parents, mothers, when we start that business, when we um, um, start that job, you know, whatever it is that we start to do, we're going to see success in it. And that's evident that we're walking in that office and we know and understand um, that that is that office, that that anointing, that ability, that gift that God gave us, who God called us to be, basically not even a gift is who we are innately who we are. All right. In order to walk in it, we need to, to be wise. That's one of the things I learned that I have to have wisdom, right? We need wisdom. There are steps to wisdom though, right? I like to, I like to believe that Proverbs 31 was very intentional when it's, when, when there was given, when it was giving instructions as being, um, um, a good wife, a wife, a wise wife, right? What I found as a wife is that in order for me to be a good wife, I needed to, to have wisdom. I really need a lot of wisdom. Um, I also understood that what wisdom for me, it took, uh, it was a process. A lot of times we just figured that, you know, we would read something and we would gain wisdom. That's not necessary. That's not the, that's not the truth actually. Well, we have to understand that wisdom is a process. We have to go through a process, right? In order to get wisdom. In fact, when we get understanding, I'm sorry, when we get knowledge, we need to get understanding first. Understanding is in itself is a process because we go through trial and error. We go through struggles. We go through issues. Like I was mentioning prior, um, when I started this, I, uh, out of a lot of trials, out of a lot of failures, out of a lot of disappointments and um, heartbreak is where I started to learn different things about um, being a wife, being a mother, being a woman, you know, being a child of God. Because the Bible tells us um, in, in uh, I don't remember it right now, but here's what it says. It says, um, David was saying, it's good that I may be afflicted, that I may know your laws, God. And this is the end result is for God to, to teach us his laws. Because in, in us knowing his laws and understanding his laws comes wisdom, right? So let's go to um, scripture. So Proverbs, in Proverbs, um, Proverbs uh, 4, 5 to 9, it says, Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve you. Forsake who not, forsake not wisdom. Love her, love wisdom, and she shall keep you, right? You know, um, keeping us, sustaining us, preserving us, keeping us in that perfect peace, right? Um, wisdom shall keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. So I want to bring forward and talk a little bit more about um, wisdom being the principal thing and also understanding, right? Continuing um, Proverbs 4, um, 5 to 9. Exalt her, and she, and this is understanding, exalt understanding, and she shall promote you. So a lot of us right now, we're in a place in our life with this, where we're, we're dissatisfied with where we are, whether we're having issues in our marriage, whether our children are being rebellious, whether we don't know what we're doing concerning parenting, whether we don't know our purpose, whether we feel frustrated, whether we feel like a failure, right? We're, we're wanting promotion. We want to get out of this season. 
We want to get to that place that um, where God called us. You know, we're looking for our breakthrough, but we need understanding in order to get to that place. Right. So it says here that in um, Proverbs four and five, um, I'm reading from verse five to nine. It says, exalt her, exalt to understanding and she will she shall promote thee. So promote us from this place of failure, this place of ignorance, this place of lack, this place of frustration, right? She shall bring thee to honor when thou doubts embrace her. She shall give, give to thine head an ornament of grace and a crown of glory shall she deliver unto thee. So this tells me that understanding is crucial in order for us to walk in wisdom, which is the principal thing. Principle, let's go to the principal thing. Why do we want to get wisdom? Why do we need to be wise as wisdom, uh, as women? Why do we need to be wise to be a good daughter of God, to be a wife, to be a good mother? Why do we need to be wise? You might think, okay, yes, yeah, Sherilyn, that's a no-brainer. But let's go. The principal thing is wisdom. Wisdom means first the primary thing, the foundational thing, the beginning of a thing, the best of something, the chief thing, the primary thing, the thing which um, all things flow from. So we need to have wisdom uh, as being a woman, right, as God ordained. As being a wife, we need to have the principle of the foundation. We need to understand, that is, the foundation of these things. We need to know what it take, what it comes from. And that foundation has to be in wisdom. You know, a lot of the times, the world is our, has prepared us. Culture, tradition has been our foundation, right? And because of culture, based, based on how we were trained up in school, because there's no, there's no class in school that teaches us how to be a principled individual, how to be a child of God, how to be a daughter of God, how to be a wife, how to be a um, a mother. There's no, the, the closest that they, they, they teach you about home or being in the home is that you have this class where you're carrying around this egg, right? But really no real principles are te taught there, right? Um, and so therefore, we want to get our foundation from um, our principle or our foundation has to be rooted in the word of God concerning who are we to be, right? Um, Google def defines um, defines principle as the first in or in order of importance. So the main thing. So we need wisdom. Wisdom is necessary, and a lot of the times we 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 um we abort the process that is necessary for us to gain that wisdom. And so God is saying that we want to make sure that we're not aborting the process, that we embrace the process. But in, when we embrace, in order to embrace the process, we need to understand what it is, what it looks like, and what we need to be doing in that process. And so this tells me that understanding is indeed crucial in order for us to walk in the wisdom, which, the, uh, which is the principal thing. Principle means first, like I mentioned, right? For example, synonyms to the word principle are the head, leader, boss, governor, managing director, employer. The, you know, this, the, well, what does an employer do, for example? An employer is someone that hires or brings people in right hires or bring people in and they do this by qualifying that person and that and this this employer will only um hire people who is similar to, to them who they can relate to who represents what their what their ideal is or what they stand for right they'll 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 um hire somebody at their standard or above Right. And so this is telling us that when we have the principal thing that is wisdom, whatever we attract to our lives. Right. Because wisdom becomes that employer of what it is that is attracted to our life. So if, like, for example, if you're a person and you say, you know, why am I keep attracting the wrong guys or the same guys that are the wrong guys? Well, we got to go back to the principal thing. What is it in me that I've subscribed to? that is attracting or employing 
right? Employing these other, this type of a person or employing this situation, this failure, this backwardness, employing this frustration or um, rejecting, rejecting, rejection, people rejecting me. What is inside of me? Because there has to be something in my makeup, right? That is it, that is doing that. So what is the principal thing? So the principal thing, God, this is why God wants to give us wisdom. Because when we gain wisdom that comes only from the word of God, the wisdom that we gain is able to eradicate all the things, get rid of all the things that are not godly, that are not wisdom, right? So that we can have the wisdom which comes from the word of God and the word of God inside of us is going to attract those things that are godly, that are prosperous, that are um, that are good, that are pleasing, right? And that, that brings success and bring promotion. And so this is why it's so important for us to get gain wisdom, right? So wisdom is a principal thing. Wisdom only comes from the word of God. You know, um, there's a lot of philosophers out there and a lot of intellects and they come up with their own um, proverbs and things like that and, 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 and slogans that sounds cute. But but you know what? It's not grounded in principle, principle, I'm sorry, in wisdom and wisdom comes from God. God is wisdom. And that's that that nowhere else can you gain wisdom from but except God. Right. All right. In order for us to get there, we need understanding, right? In order for us to get to wisdom, we need understanding. Without knowledge, it's impossible to get understanding, right? However, when we gain the knowledge, a lot of us have knowledge, right? We gather knowledge, we read, read our word. Um, we listen to a lot of messages, you know, we're constantly gaining knowledge, but knowledge is no good to us if we don't have understanding. And so the scripture tells us in everything, in all our getting, we must get an understanding, you know, and so understanding also is a process. So I want to talk to us about a process, right? So understanding is a process, right? Say that again. Understanding is a process. It takes time. This is what I will um, attempt to bring, bring to us concerning the office of a daughter of the Most High God. We need to understand our process. You know, we have to remain, once you understand the process, when things come at you, you're, you're like, okay, this is part of the process and here's how I operate. So you'll, you'll have peace of mind, right? You'll have power because if we don't understand that it's a process, when things happen, fear comes in. We, we, we're fearful. And the Bible says he, uh, that God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power love and a sound mind. And what this tells me that when we don't understand that, that, that it's a process, when we don't get understanding and understand that understanding is necessary and it's also a process, then fear comes in. Then we will lose our power to be able to accomplish what it is and makes, which makes us abort what God has given us to do. So we might be in the process of, um, again, becoming the wife to the husband that God has in our store in store for us. But in our process, things happen and we abort the process because it doesn't feel good. You know, you don't understand, right? And so therefore you abort it because you don't understand that this is necessary to get you to that next level. And so you're at the same point, not gaining the blessings and the favor and, and all that God has in store for you as the daughter of God, right? So we have to know, understand that, Understanding is a process. So the Bible tells us that in all our getting, it says wisdom is a principal thing, but we need to have understanding first. And then before we get understanding, we need knowledge. So here's the process, knowledge, then understanding, and then wisdom. So when we get the knowledge, we go through a process that gives us understanding. So the test, the trials, the situation that we go into, you and I, what happened, this is, is necessary for the affliction to come because we're gaining certain understandings. Standing, this helps us go to seek knowledge pertaining to a specific area. And as we're going through and we're utilizing the knowledge we have and we're actually exercising it and walking it out, and then we see the rewards that the promise fulfilled based on our action, right? Which is faith, which is our um, us believing the word of God and walking it out. Then we're gained understanding. And when we are in the pattern of, of doing the word, we gain its wisdom. It's likened to us as wisdom, right? Now, one of the things I want us to understand as daughters of God, we're called, we're given um, 
two main responsibilities, right? Where we have two main responsibilities of, as daughters of God. And that is, number one, we're called to be priests. Number two, we are kings. We are priests and we're kings. Don't get thrown off with the king king's word because again, you men, male and female are part of mankind. The man that God created in Genesis, mankind is man is plural. He says, "Let us make man in our own image." God is male. Is God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? There's no female God, right? Um, angels is Gabriel, Michael, Lucifer. They're all male. So spirit. This tells us that spiritual being is like a male. Um, it's it's a, of a male. I don't know what's the word. I don't want to say sex, but it's male, right? It's not really female. So you and I are really spirit man. So we are kings. We're referred to as kings in the spirit realm. So in the spirit realm, we're considered well, as daughters. We um our responsibility is to be priests and kings, and that's why the Bible tells us that Jesus is king of all kings, right? And so that doesn't mean just male alone. It means us women too, right? So we, we are called to be priests and we're called to be kings. So this is our job. So we need to understand our job in the process of us getting from where we are right now to, to what God called us to be as daughters, walking in the office as daughters. We have to have an understanding that there's two things we're called to do. We're called to be priests and we're called to be kings. A lot of us, we focus on the king's part. We focus on focus that we're royalty. We're joined theirs with Jesus and more than overcomers. And we're excited about the, you know, the, the authority and rule and the dominion and all this stuff. You know, we love that part. But when it when it comes to being priests, no, nobody want to be a priest. So let's talk about that priest. Um, the Holy Spirit want me to, to really talk about the priest part. Because in order to become a king, we first must become priests. We cannot qualify to be a king unless we are priests first. So we know that kings rule. So we're called to rule. So we are to be priests. The problem is, like I mentioned, nobody wants to be um no nobody wants to be a king. But without it, right? We are out, out of order. If we want to be kings and not be priests, then we're out of order. In Guyana, they said, man, she's too wrong and out of, out of order. And basically, that's what it is. If we're trying to be kings or we want to be royalty first and not become priests, then we're going to be out of order. It's not even going to work, right? We'll be disqualified in the eyes of God and disqualified in, in the kingdom right how are we priests let's look at scripture revelations 20 and um six so revelation 20 and six says blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection over such the second that has no power right by they i mean but they shall be priests of god and of christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So that second part there, but they, that's you and I, right? We are kings, right? But we also priests. It says you and I, but they shall be priests. See, it says we're priests first, priests of God and of Christ. So we're first priests of God and of Christ, before the next part it says and shall reign with him a thousand years so reign means that we're kings we're reigning together with kings we're joint ears with jesus and more than overcomer we know the scripture revelation 20 and 6 tells us clearly that we're to be priests first our two assignments right in the in the res um, resurrection we resurrected with christ jesus so there's two things we're supposed we, we we are um responsible our job title is as um, children or daughters of God is that we're to be priests and we're to be king. We're, um, I'm going to talk about what being a priest means, but we know, of course, king is to rule. We're to rule. What is the job of a priest? We must look to the one who was um, who we call our leader. Let's look to Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is our leader, right? We said, you know, he's our Lord. Right, he's our, which means we're a master, and so I want to define the word leader because leader or leadership is basically influence, right? And Jesus is our. We look to Jesus Christ for leadership, and influence is the the capacity to have an effect an effect on the character, 
development or behavior or of someone or something. So Jesus Christ in in um in essence um has to have an effect on our character, our development and our behavior. A lot of us are not looking to Jesus Christ for our influence. We're looking at looking at social media personalities, uh, movie stars, we're looking to presidents, we're looking to people in power, we look into everyone else or people in our family or people in our society or or um sports individuals, famous people, but we're not looking to Christ Jesus for our influence, right? So if we're looking to, we know we're going to be here, let's say we get 100 years. We're here on 100 years. Where are we going to spend eternity? So we have to always have an eternal perspective. I think a lot of times we're only concerned about the world that we're in and we're not promised tomorrow. We always have to have an eternal perspective. So if we have an eternal perspective, we want to make sure that we're preparing ourselves now for what's going to happen for a thousand years. As Christ said, we, we, do we want to reign with Jesus Christ, right? Um, as priests and, and as, as kings, or do we want to spell eternity in, in hellfire. I don't know about you, but I want to be reigning with Jesus Christ. But we have to qualify for the job. And so this is what Jesus Christ with his Holy Spirit is constantly helping us to realize, to bring understanding to us. And so leadership is basically influence. Um, it is through the, the influencer's behavior and lifestyle that we are influenced right? So we have to look at Jesus's behavior and his life, uh, lifestyle. So let's look at scripture. In Hebrew 5 and 7, it says, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication, this is Jesus, with vehement cries and tears to him, um, his father, God the father, who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear, Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience um, by the things which he suffered. What I want to take from this scripture right now is the fact that what did he offer up? Prayer and supplication. And this is uh, Jesus offered up prayer and supplication. You know, as a priest, we are to submit ourselves to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Just like Jesus Christ submitted himself to the Lord, to the Lordship of his father in heaven. Remember in scriptures, you read, you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. When Jesus was speaking, Jesus always said, I do not do anything except I hear the father say. What my father, when you see me, you see my father. You know, what my father tells me to say, that, that I say. So he was totally, he was, he was, he was, he made his father his Lord, his master. Whatever he allowed his father to lead him. And so as, as, as the body, right? As, um, why brides of Christ or daughters of God, we're we're to, we're supposed to, I'm getting ahead of myself, but we're supposed to obey our husband Christ, right? So here it is, um, Christ's behavior or his character is supposed to influence our behavior. So how, what are we supposed to do? Christ, while he worked, walked the earth, he was, he behaved in the office of a priest. He offered up prayers and supplication. Again, now Christ sitting at the right hand of the father, he is the, um, our great high priest. So he's still operating as a priest. He's also a king, right? And we're joint heirs with him. So we are being developed and prepared to be um, priests and king, just like Christ is a priest and king, because we're supposed to rule together with him, right? So basically, the first thing, of course, we have to make sure that we are walking in the, um, in the office of a priest. And as I mentioned, a priest is supposed to submit right? We are supposed to submit to the will of our Lord Jesus Christ. What is the will of the Lord, of our Lord Jesus Christ? His word, his commandment, right? Um, by doing this, we are saying to, to, to Jesus Christ, I love you. You're my husband. I accept you as my husband because my father in heaven gave me to you, right? So basically, I'm going to love you. And how do I love you? John 14, 15 says it. If you, love, if you love me, keep my commandments. What are his commandments? His word. What are the word? The scriptures. Whatever God says for us to do, we're to do. We're to do all of the word. You know, so time and time, one of the things that, that really, 
I don't even want to say the word. I want to speak in neck, but I, I don't like it. I can't stand it. When people don't, they argue with the word of God. They reject. I know it says, but I hate. That's what I want to say. I hate it. I hate when I, I know God said, but. You don't know what I want to tell you when you do that. And if you know me, you listen to this, please don't say that to me. You know, um, you already know what I will think, right? You know, because you can't say yes, but the word. What else is there? If you say yes, but you're talking about Satan automatically. So you're telling me you're, you are, you are, your Lord is Satan. Your leader is Satan. The one that influenced you is Satan. Because if you yes, but the word, Father, the, um, the word of God says that you cannot, you cannot serve two masters. Either you love one or you hate the other, right? And so um, you, you can't be unstable, right? You know, um, double-minded because a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And could it be a lot of, um, be, the reason why we're not going forward, the reason why we're in this place of, um, instability and insecurity is because we are indeed double-minded. And I'm not, I'm preaching to, you know, I'm, I, I'm that, per I was that person. Again, this was understanding. Remember I told you it's a process and it took me years and I'm continually learning and continually getting understanding on different things. So I'll never arrive. I'll tell you that I'll never arrive and I don't want to because it's too sweet getting to know the word of God. It's too sweet getting to get some uh, understanding with him, right? I don't want to leave that because what, what else is there, right? So here we go. So as a priest, we're to submit to the word of God. We're supposed to submit to his will, which is his word. And if we sub when we submit to his will and his word, we're telling him our heart is saying, God, I love you, right? God, I love you. We must submit to him. So how do we submit to him? We submit to him in prayer, right? You know, um, we submit to God in our prayer life, especially. Prayer is a way to get what God wants, not what we want. Why? Because his ways is simply better than ours. So as daughters of God, when we go to intercede, when we go to pray to God, we have to, we can't go to God with what we want. We have to go to God with what he wants and what he wants is his word. So, you know, God wants us to humble ourselves. So we're here to humble ourselves. So whatever it is that we, we don't know, again, we're going to go to God and ask for wisdom. We're going to ask him for knowledge and understanding. Father, give me a spirit of um, wisdom, knowledge and understanding. You know, let your Holy Spirit teach me and guide me into all truth. So that will be your prayer. Right, because you don't know, you don't. If you don't know, you don't understand. So prayer is a way to do to get what God wants, not what we want. And a lot of times, people are constantly praying the will, their own will, instead of God's will. And as daughters of God, we can't do that. We're not daughters of God if we're praying our own will. God knows we have needs, right? Matthew tells us. He says, God knows we have needs. Right. If he takes care of the birds of the ear and the fish in the sea. Right. He says that the, the flowers in the in the field, none of them is, was so um, dressed. So, um, Solomon in all his splendor was not as dressed and um, um, uniformed as one of the, the, the flowers in the field that is here today and is thrown into the fire tomorrow. He says, how much more will I take care of you who are his daughters? So we don't have to worry about what we will eat, what we will, what we will wear or tomorrow. We just want to make sure we bring ourselves to God and say, God, what is it that you want? Whatever, when we go to God, we got to go and find out, Daddy, what do you want? We are, we're his daughters. Daddy, what is it that you need? I'm, even if you're frustrated, if you're feeling um, anxiety, stress, sad, whatever it is, Father God, ah. Uh, I just know that your word says that you give me oil of joy for mourning, you know, and I'm just, I'm not feeling well. So I'm bringing, uh, I'm feeling a little anxious. So I'm making this supplication to you. I'm coming and bring this supplication to you. I'm feeling this way. And your word says, if I give you thanksgiving, so you spend that time giving him thanks. Father, I thank you for life. Um, I thank you for, for health. I thank you for strength. I thank you for my job. I thank you for my children that they're alive. I thank you, Father God, that the 
the world, you know, we, we even have a world that I have a roof over my head, you know, that, you know, there's people that I can reach out to you. I'm thankful that I can even pray to you. I'm thank you for Jesus Christ. And thank you that Jesus Christ died for me so that I could have life and I could come to you, right? Um, because the, the veil was torn so I could come to you and not be rejected and you will hear me, right? And answer me, you know? And so there's so much things to be good, pray, grateful for. If you don't know what to be grateful for, open up the Psalms. There's some wonderful Psalms that you could have a good time in there, you know? Um, so praying the will of God, you want to pray what God wants. What does God want? His word. He told us what he wants in his word. So even when you're praying, right, in, in times of anxiety and when things are not going the way that you want it, God said, bring, make some, don't be anxious for anything. But in prayer and supplication, it, with thanksgiving, that part, thanksgiving, is very important. It's a quick part we usually read over. But there, that's a, in there is a secret, I mean, not even a secret, it's a powerful um, ingredient in helping us. We spend our time worshiping, which is also the next thing that a priest do is worship. So we pray, right? We make supplication and then we, we worship. Those are the two things that a priest do. So we humble ourselves in prayer, right? And we also worship. And so here it is when we're praying, we make, we spend a lot of time worshiping, glorifying God, reminding him of how wonderful he is, that he's the Alpha and Omega, that he's an all sufficient God. He's Jehovah Jireh, my provider. You are indeed Jehovah Shalom, Lord, my peace. You're Jehovah Makadisk and my sanctifier. You're Jehovah seeking you, Lord, my righteousness. And you, and because you've made me righteous, you says, no good thing. You are my son and my shield. No good thing will you withhold from me because I, as I walk upright with you. You know, there's so many good things that you could just praise the Lord in your situation, right? So the two things as a priest, as daughters, we spend a lot of time praying. What do we pray? We pray the will of God and not our way. We pray, uh, pray. Prayer is a way to get what God wants and not what we want. And then in that process, if we are having some situation and we're not feeling 100%, worship is what we do. We just start to worship and worship in itself, especially when you're going through it's sacri it feels like a sacrifice. And again, that's another, sa it's a sacrifice. So we give him sacrifice of praise, right? So these are two things that a daughter does. You know, she operates as a priest and as a king, right? So we're in the play area of priest. A lot of us don't do the priest part good. We want, we rush over that or we go to church for one hour, right? And we go to church for one hour. We do that for one hour. And for the rest of the week, we want to rule. We want to have dominion, right? And a lot of us, because we've not been in a place of worship and a, a humble spirit, a humble heart, we have not humbled ourselves to God. We, we, we've been haughty. Now we're like, okay, I'm going to rule, reign. I'm going to have rule and dominion over the over the people. A lot of times we, 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 we have rule, reign, and dominion over people. We try to control, manipulate people, and we're not controlling our situations. Why? Because we did not leave it in God's hands. Right, we're not waiting on the outcome. We're not using any wisdom, right? So that's why the, the Bible tells us we get wisdom, and we get that through understanding that we are priests and kings. We are priests first before we're kings. Being a priest qualify us to be kings or royalty, right? And one of the reasons, like I mentioned, that um, we wanna we want to be able to make sure that we are praying what God wants. It's because his way is better. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think, according to the work, power that worketh in us. So we want that exceedingly and abundantly, abundant grace, peace, blessings, you know, favor, what it is. We want it to be in excess. And that's what God promises. We don't, you know, he, he, whatever we ask for, he's he able to go over and above that, right? So that's why it's, it's just wise. Again, that's why wisdom is important, right? Your current situations, right? Um, the current situation that you're going through is there to train you in the office of a priest. Remember I told you, I started off by saying, you know, in the beginning uh, part of our marriage, when I was going through a lot of challenges, I learned, I learned, um, um, that's where I learned my position or my position as a daughter of God. That's when I found out how much that my daddy loves me and how much he don't play about me, how much he loves me and anything I ask him, he's willing to give to me. But a lot of times it doesn't happen because 
when it, when it didn't happen is because I didn't have an understanding. I didn't have knowledge. I didn't have understanding. So I couldn't walk in the wisdom. And wisdom is the principal thing. And so he had to take me through a, a series of situations to have me seek his word, right? To gain his knowledge so that I can have that deliverance in that area and start walking it out and see, oh, okay, daddy, okay, I know, I see it, I see it. And then the blessings is ex over and above what I can ask for. So we cannot become kings unless, again, we first become priests. Even Jesus had to suffer first as a priest before he became a king. And I'm going to go into that more now. Um, Luke 22, um, 39 to 45. And it says, Coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives, as he was accustomed, and his disciples also follow him. 40. When he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. 41. Pray. That's a nugget. Pray so that you will not enter into temptation. A lot of us who have, um, we, we have weak will, so to say, and we're easily tempted into certain enticed. We have to pray. That means our prayer life is not where it needs to be. We have to be priests. Remember, we have to give sacrifice of praise and we have to pray, make supplication, right? According to the will of God, which is the word of God. For the one, um, 41 of Matthew, um, of Luke, 22, 41 of Luke 22, it says, and he was withdrawn from them about a stone throw and he kept down and prayed 42 saying, father, if it's your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And here it is. He's praying, guys. He's praying. He's in the garden. Um, I think it's the garden of Gethsemane, if I'm not wrong. Um, and here it is. He's known that this cup of um, crucifixion is before him, that he's going to die for the lives um, for all of us. And he knew what he was. He had to go through. And then also he would have been separated from his father. But it was so much to him. Like, like it was so overwhelming. If you think that you were going to be lynched. You're going to be that whole, that whole day before you will be praying, right? So um, he says, Father, if it's your will, Father, if it's your will, take this cup away. Again, he said, Father, if it's your will, he's praying for a situation that he's got a grievous situation. How many of us are in such situation? Our marriage is on the rock. Our children are rebellious. We have financial issues. We don't know, um, we having difficulty at the job. You know, our health is, is, is um, jacked up. Whatever it is that's going on in that moment, right? To us is a real situation. It's a dire situation. It's not fun. Right. And here it is. He's knowing he's going to be going to be crucified. He's about to be separated from his father. And the, the thought of that is unbelievable. We can't even imagine. And he says, Father, here's his prayer. Father of Luke 22, 42. He says, Father, if it's your will. First of all, he's asking, Father, if it's your will. He didn't say, Father, it's my will that you take this cup away from me. But nevertheless, let your will be done. No, he says, Father, if it is your will. So we have to pray the will of God and not our will, right? He says, if it's your will, take the cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will be done, but yours, right? Not my will, but yours be done. And then it says, then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And here it is. We may be going through our situation. It may be like, oh God, I've been praying on this situation for like five months now, a year now. Father God, you may be praying in agony over it earnestly, but you have to continue to pray. You got to continue to pray. Pray until you see the manifestation of what it is that you're praying. Because, because sometimes, a lot of the times, we're not praying the will of God. But when we pray, I found that when I pray the will of God, it doesn't take too long. It doesn't take years. When I pray the will of God, the set time comes and I, and I get it in the set time. Right. But I know I always have to understand that there's a process and I might God is showing me something in that process. So in while that while I'm praying for him and believing him to come through in an area. Right. I am also paying attention to what I need to learn in that process because he's showing me he's always showing me to give me understanding. Right. So here it is. Um, Jesus Christ continued to pray. 
and he um, prayed more earnestly. He dug, dug in. Then, he's, then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. When he rose up from prayer and he had, and, and he had come to his disciples, he found them sleeping from sorrow. Then he said to them, why do you sleep? Rise and pray lest you enter into temptation. Again, uh, it shows me that prayer is a way on how we can shield ourselves from the temptation of the devil. If we are not spending time praying the word of God or the will of God, or you know, even if you're praying in your in your to in, 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 in tongues, you know, sometimes during the day, sometimes I just be here and I just be praying in tongues because I don't want my brain to be going all over the place because guess what? Temptation is all around you. I'm tempted to be anxious to to think too much about stuff, to be caught up in um, to-do lists and that type of stuff. I need to do that because I need to train my mind not to think about different things because I have a tendency, I had a tendency of um, worrying and fretting, right? And um, yeah, fretting about things, wanting things to change and then fretting about it, right? Um, I didn't fret open with my mouth, but it was in my brain. I was anxious. I won't tell nobody anything, but I'll be thinking about it over and over in my mind. So I have to pray in the spirit so that I won't lead, let, be led into that temptation of vain imagination, right? And so we have to make sure that we're taking the example of our leader, Jesus Christ. So we're called as daughters, again, to be priest and king and in priests we must be a priest first before we be a um, king and also understand that our process that we're going through is to bring us understanding we might have knowledge of the word of god but we still have to go through non understanding now getting ready for the office as a king um as the king's daughter so now first let us see how god sees us we are his daughters betrothed to his son he gives us er he give jesus everything he gave everything that is good and perfect to his son. Let's look at Philippians 2 and 9. It says, For this reason also God highly exalted him, him who Jesus, and bestowed on him the name which is above all names. So God bestowed upon Jesus the name above all names. He is, he is Lord of all. He's Lord of all, right? And Ephesians 1, 20 to 20, uh, 21. 1, verse 1, 20 to 21, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him as his own at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. So Jesus reigns supreme, man. God gave him this title, the power and the authority and dominion over all things. Now, this tells you clearly that whatever God gives to Jesus is nothing but the best. So here's another thing. He gave his son you. He gave his son you. You belong to Jesus. What does that tell you about your value in your in his eyes, right? What does that tell you? If God gives Jesus um, um, a, a seat next to him in the heavenly places, far above principalities, powers, might, dominion, and every name that is named, not only in the world, but in the one to come, right? He gave him the name above all names. He gave everything to his son, and he also gave him you. What does that say about your value? You see, we have to see ourselves in the eyes of God. So here's one of the things. When women come to me, this is what you don't come. You don't come and bring, you, don't, you know, I, when people come to me about this black girl magic, I'll be like, get out of here with that black girl magic. Don't come to me with no black girl. First of all, magic is divination. So don't bring no witchcraft, no divination here. Don't bring no black girl what magic. I am far above that. Don't you know who I am? I am the daughter of the Most High God. The Alpha and Omega, he is the one that calls me his daughter. So I don't need to be in no little group. Don't, don't minimize my value. Don't minimize my status, right? Women, um, any women liberals or women lib nonsense, move that from me. Don't try to carve me in no worldly system. 
You know, I'm far above that. I'm seated with Jesus in heavenly places. So don't come and bring me down to no low status. You got to know who you are. Stop joining groups and organization of this world that is trying to get you to agree with them to rob you of your kingdom status, right? You, you don't want to limit yourself down here, far beyond the foot. The foot. Remember, Jesus stripped the powers of Satan and walked him naked through the street, Corinthians 2, 13 to 14. He has no power. In fact, he's been stripped and he's like, he's the, like the ugliest thing. He's nothing. And his place is an eternal fire. And he's the one who rules this earth. So this world. So, so if you want to get involved and tie yourself to the world, Guess where you're going? Guess what kind of life you're going to get? You're going to get the life of oppression. You're going to get the life of depression, the life of lack, of poverty, of sickness, of aff affliction. That's what you're going to get. You're not going to be operating in the office as a daughter. So one of the things I would strongly recommend, I do not, and this is one of the things that I had to be talking to my daughter, as to be, daughter about as she is growing, right? Don't get involved in organizations with women. Don't get, don't join organization, women organization that seeks to separate you from the principal things of God. You know, black girl magic, that's worship, that's idol worship. You're worshiping a, a color. You're worshiping a race. God says you might have no idols before you because I'm the, I'm, I'm uh, a jealous God visiting the iniquities because that is idol worship. Visiting the iniquities of the father and uh, to, to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. And if you're idol worshiping and you're worshiping idols, then guess what? You have not, you, you are rejected God. He's not your God. Your complexion is your God. Your hair is your God, right? Your, your, um, your community is your God. Whatever it is that you're putting out there, that's your God. God is not your God. And it's an idol. And God told me since last year, um, 2021, the beginning of 2021, uh, 2022, sorry. He's coming after the idols. He's coming after the idols of the people. 2020 is nothing compared to what's coming up. And you want to make sure that you're putting yourself in the, do in the office of a daughter, right? You want to make sure that you're walking in that office as a daughter, right? So don't allow the enemy to fool you and trick you into becoming part of cliques of organization that are worldly inspired. And the goal of it is basically witchcraft and manipulation, which means they're using every honest, honest spirit, spirit of domination, spirit of um, control and manipulation to get others that are not, that they assume don't understand them to come on their side or to pay attention to them, right? I don't pay attention to them. When they, when they, when when I see people online and so on with the with the black girl magic and stuff, if you comment with me, notice I don't comment with anything that has to do with race or culture. I don't come. I don't even respond to your comment because I will not come in agreement with a curse. I do not want to come in agreement with a curse. And if you look at your life, you realize that there's things and affliction that's coming up to you and you're praying to God, believing God for stuff and it's being delayed and you're wondering why. It's because you've, you've aligned yourself with other gods. The Bible talks about it. We play the harlot. You belong to Christ. You were betrothed to Christ. And so let me go into scripture. 2 Corinthians 11 and 2 says, For I am jealous over you with a je godly jealousy. You hear that? He th this is what you are royalty. He betrothed you to his son. He gave you to his son. And you see all the things. He gave his son prince, um, power over all things. He's, he's, Jesus is the name above all names. He gave him authority over all things. And then he gave him you. So here in 2 Corinthians 11 and 2, it says, For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. Don't have no idols. For I have espoused you to one husband. Not all these secret societies and all these organizations and all these things that you're part of and these BLMs, right? Not all these things. He said, I have, uh, for I have exposed you to one husband. That name is Jesus Christ, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So let me read the scripture and not add anything to it. Second Corinthians 11 and 2 says, for I am a jealous, I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. For I have exposed you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. 
Isaiah 54 and 5, it says, For thy maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. He's called the God of the whole earth. Jeremiah 3 and 14 says, Torn all black sliding children, saith the Lord. For I am married unto you. I have I will take I will take you one of a city, two of a family, and I will bring you into Zion, right? You know, you know, we've been backsliding when you've been turned away from all these organizations you've been a part of because they're idols. That's considered backsliding. God said, I am married to you. Right? He's married to you. So when you're putting all these things in front of him, guess what? You are an adulterer. Right? You're in an adulterous relationship. Hosea 2, 19 and 20, it says, And I will betroth thee unto me forever. Yea, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and in mercy. I will even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness and thou shalt know the Lord. What a great, great, um, that is so, that is so awesome for you to be connected with the, with the Holy One of Israel. Perfection, holy, and he's making you perfect and pure like he is. Embrace that. But in order for you to embrace it, you have to forget, you got to get rid of all your idols. Can a man serve two masters, right? Philippians 2, 9 and 11. Wherefore, God has also God also have exalted, sorry, Philippians 2, 9 and 11. Wherefore, God also have highly exalted him, who, Christ, and given him a name above all name, right? That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord the, to the glory of God the Father. All of this is about God. You see, when we make it about God, about the principal thing, God is wisdom. When we make our entire life, right, um, about God, right, as priests, then we will see that we'll be promoted, we'll be elevated. You know, we will be able to walk in that office, that royalty office as king. Now, what should we, what do we need to do? Number one, the first thing, and then again, this is my, I'm going to wrap it up with this. This is going to be, this is just the first part of teaching, um, teach, uh, talking about being, walking in the office of the daughter of God. Number one, we need, we need to repent. Repentance. We must have a repentant heart. Right. This is it's a not it's something that you always have. I always have to be having a repentant heart. You know, um, I love um, in Kevin's book that it began with um, repentance and forgiveness. Read those two every day. Read them every day. Right. Because that's who we that's the heart that we need to have. We must have a repentant heart. You know, we are too puffed up as women. Like I started off talking about, we are too puffed up as women. We compete with men. We kill our children through a, with, with abortion, also with our mouth, tearing them down. We look for our identity, security, and purpose in people, places, and things. We look for acceptance in groups, clubs, societies, and organization. We're always looking, you know, looking away from the home, but desire to have a home. You know, we have, we have overcome, we, we've, we've become so skillful at being a witch. We've become skillful witches. We manipulate others with our emotion, our brokenness, our skin color, our hair, our body size. You know, well, you know, we're the big bone girls. And if you're a big, if you're not, if you're not big bone, then you can't be with the, oh, we the slim girls. If you're not slim like us, then you got to go over that side or whatever the case may be. Or my hair, my natural hair, you know, you go away with your straight hair. Guess what? You are trying to manipulate, dominate, and you're trying to control others and their emotion. It is witchcraft. Stop it. We try to dominate our husbands and our sons right? Um, which whatever means um, necessary. We try to control everything in our life and not release it to the one who can help us. And that's Jesus. 
Second Chronicles 7 and 14 says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive them their sins and, will, and I will heal their land. A lot of us, we need healing in our land. We, every, our land is everything that concerns us. Our home, you know, where we, wherever we work, wherever we are, that's our land where we are, everything around us, about us. That's how I see it. Wherever I go, that's a place that God gave me to have dominion, you know, in that area. But I cannot, God can't give, heal those things about me. If I'm, if I'm at, a jo at the job and because I'm, you know, I have, I don't have a repentant heart. I'm unforgiving. You know, I'm, I'm manipulating people. I'm trying to dominate people. I'm not walking in the office of a, of a daughter where I'm not, I don't have a humble spirit, but I'm arguing people. I'm full of strife and all that stuff. Then the land in my job, you know, I'm going to attract strife. I'm going to attract um, resentment. I'm going to attract all those things, right? Now say you're not the type of person and you're in a place where you're experiencing somebody that that's difficult. That's what you want to hear. You want to make sure that you're walking out the, uh, the, what God called you to do. According to, what is it? Luke 5, 527 to 28. And it, and it, it says, you know, love those who, who hate you, right? Love your enemies, right? You know, you, you um, do good to those who hate you. You know, you bless those who curse you. And you pray for those who spitefully use you and abuse you. You want to walk out your 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 uh, you as Christ. You want to walk out your your responsibility as a priest in those atmosphere. And again, that's how God is going to heal your land. And so, going back to Second Chronicles seven seventeen and four seven and fourteen, if my people who are called by my name, as we are daughters of Christ, we have to humble ourselves. We have to be in this constant um, place of prayer, petitioning God, prayer and worship. Pray and what do we do? We pray and worship. What when you go when um when we go to heaven? What are we gonna be doing all day? We are gonna be praying and worshiping. You know that like the like the angels. The angels sing holy. You know all that. We don't have to go to no job. We don't got man. All we gonna be seeing is the goodness of God and it's gonna ignite worship in us all the time. We're just gonna be worship all day. That's going to be awesome. There's going to be a party in heaven all day. So don't, don't be partying with this worldly partying, right? Let's get down to business. Let, let's get practice, get our practice on with our praise and our worship, you know, and our fasting, right? Right here. But we won't have to fast when we go to heaven. We just will be praying and praising and worshiping because, you know, the Holy Spirit, when you read Revelation, the, the, the angels and the saints, they just sing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. I could imagine how beautiful heaven is, you know, um, how the new, how beautiful the new Jerusalem is going to be when we get there because everything is going to ignite incite um worship inside us make, make us want to worship worship you know all the time that's what i envision it as so um i don't know what holy spirit gave you to envision you envision that but psalm 51 and 17 says the sacrifices of god are a broken broken spirit a broken a contrite heart these oh god you shall you shall not you will not despise so god you don't want god to despise you as as his daughter you want him to always accept you willingly accept you in his presence and anything you come he can't wait to see you remember it in esther in the book of esther when she fasted and prayed and humbled herself before her god in heaven what happened the favor came towards her from her husband on earth and so much so that he said you know what Come, come before me, queen. Up to half of the kingdom, I will give it to you because of the favor. He just welcomed her in the pres in his presence. And though she went before him when it was law, um, unlawful to go before the king if you're not summoned. If he didn't give you the invitation and you come there, he had to have grace and faith. You have to have grace and favor of of him for him to um to put out his scepter to welcome you. If you didn't, if he didn't, um, if you didn't find favor with him, it was off with your head, right? But she found favor with her husband. Not only did he put out the scepter to accept her in, her, in his presence, but he says, oh, up to half of my kingdom. And, and he was, he was, he was no regular. He owned like most of the rest, the, the, the rich world, right? The Persian empire was like the, the, the main empire by, uh, in those days. And he was going to give her half of that. 
right? So how much more your God in heaven who owns everything, everything, right? He subdued um, uh, scorpions and serpents and all the kingdom of darkness under you according to Luke 10, 19, right? This is what God is doing, do, does for you. And he does, he's able to do that. That's able to be manifested when you go before him with a broken and contrite heart. So if you go there puffed up and haughty, he's not hearing you. In fact, he's resisting you, the word says. The word says he resists the proud, but he show more grace to the humble. So we want to make sure that we're going before him. So I'm going to read Hebrew 5 and 7 again. Who in the days of his flesh, that's Christ, right? Um, Jesus Christ. When he had offered up prayers and supplication with vehement cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was heard because of his godly fear, Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. So the last part, ver, um, um, Hebrew 5 and 8. Though he was a son, though you're a daughter, right? Though you're a daughter, yet, you're, yet you need to learn obedience by the things that you suffer. What we were talking about before. You're going to go through suffer. You, your challenge that you're going through right now is a preparation ground. It's giving you, it's to give you understanding because God wants you to walk in wisdom. He wants you to be wise because from the foundation, the beginning of wisdom, you know, from the, from the foundation of the root of wisdom, then all it employs and attract all things are good. It attracts the blessing, the favor, the promises of God from his wisdom, from him. But if we don't have the wisdom, then we don't qualify for those things and God is simply causing us to go through certain suffering on certain challenges why because he wants us to be obedient to his word to his way and his will and that could only happen when we have a repentant heart when we're humble before him when we have a broken and contrite spirit right the best way to repent and to humble ourselves is to love uh, live sorry a fasted life and love living a fasted life we have to live in a, live a fasted life because there's so many things in today's world that's constantly cluttering cluttering us and vying for our attention and we don't know what was put inside of us so a fast resets us right and it resets us not only in the physical um and in our body but it reset on our mind here on our soul but it resets us in spiritually because we don't know the spiritual attack that was building up against us because satan is jealous of the blessings and the life that god has given us right so we even though things are going good you want to make sure that you still remain a priest right in order to qualify to be that that king we must first become priests so we want to fast to repent, forgive, thank God, and worship God. So we want to live a life of um, repentance through fasting. Always when people uh, do something to us, when we, we, we fall short because we're going to sin, every day we sin, right? I, might, I must have probably, I probably sinned in this conversation, right? But what I'm going to do is to make sure I repent. Father God, if it's anything I've done in, in, in thought, word, or deed that was contrary to your perfect will for your daughters and may have heard, heard them in a negative way, I repent for it. And I thank you for forgiving me, right? And so and the next thing people you want to do constantly is forgiving. The things I tell our children, I said, make sure that you always forgive and never go to bed not forgiving people. Always forgive. Because people are going to do things to you all the time, but you always want to be forgiving. Because God forbid your, your, your life gets taken. If you die in unforgiveness, you are not going to heaven. The Bible tells us clearly in, um, I can't remember the scripture right now. I know it's a 14 and a 15 in it, but it's the scripture that says, um, because God forgive us, we must forgive others. Because God forgive us our sins, we ought to forgive others. Because if we don't forgive others their sins, then God won't forgive us our sins. In some places it says, if we forgive others their trespasses, then God will forgive us our trespasses against others. And that's what we want. And we want to live a life of worship, always sacrifice of praise, especially when things are not going good. I got this um, tip from Tiffany. She says every time she um, have a tendency to worry, she worship instead. And that's something that I need. That was a nugget that I got because one of the things, when things are not going right, I won't say it out, but in my mind, I will worry. And I didn't know it was worrying because if I'm playing it over and over in my mind, then I'm worrying about it instead of worshiping over. So that's it, guys. I'll say a quick prayer. I'm about to get on a um, call right now.
Heavenly Father, I thank you for your daughters. Father, we give you glory and honor. Thank you that you are indeed our Father in heaven that loves us. You love us so much that you sent your only begotten Son, perfect in all of his ways, pure and holy, exceptional King. And I can imagine how handsome he is as well. You sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. In our sinful nation, while we were still sinners, you died for us. And we fall short every day, Lord God, but still you sent your son because you knew we couldn't do it on our own. And we're so grateful to you. I'm just thanking you, Lord God, and blessing your name. What a great, awesome dad you are. You're an awesome father. You're a father that loves you. Says you, 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 um, those whom you love, you chasten. Right, that's like a father um, chastens the uh, the son that he loves. And I thank you, Lord God, that though we may be going through challenges and struggles, we are thanking you right now for them. Why? Because we know that you're showing us that you love us because you're chastening us so that we could gain knowledge of the things that we're not doing right so that we could gain understanding, which is getting your word, learning your word and acting out your word. I mean, living your word, not just being hearers, but do us also so we could have that understanding and therefore walking in wisdom and wisdom, your word says is the principal thing and the principle in the, from which all things come from the principle is the beginning thing the, the the foundation of a thing and it employs um is the boss the, the 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 head the leader principle means leader means the boss means employer and so therefore as as the wisdom being um the employer inside of us will employ or attract all those things that you you had in store for us before the foundation of the earth for your word says that you've blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly realms and so lord god in order for those things to come down we must be doing we need to do something right yes we call it forth but in order for it to, to come we also have to be in the right place to be able to sustain it and store it properly and you won't give it to a fool so so Father God, help us search our heart and know our every evil way. And if there's anything that in us that is not pleasing in your sight, Father, please cleanse us, purify us, teach us, show us the ways, show us, teach us your ways. Holy Spirit, we pray for a spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of counsel and might. Father God, send us the teachers. Send us, Father God, those people are that are good examples that we can see. Like, you know what? That's a daughter of God because she's the, the, her, her life style speaks to the goodness of God. And so I can see, you know, instead of women, uh, us getting jealous because we see people succeeding or see people getting blessed on social media or in our life, on our, on our circle, instead of getting jealous, we should see the people's success, the daughters of your success as an example or a um, encouragement that, you know, because they're doing the things, they're become the priests, they're, they're operating as a priest, fasting, praising and worshiping you, humbling themselves. When I do that, the same thing come on to me. And in doing the humbling ourselves, we will see the wickedness in our own heart, Father God, that you will convict us with the wickedness in our own heart so that we be delivered from those things because it's not, it's not of a virtuous woman. And so, Lord God, I thank you that you're making us virtuous women. We bind the enemies, plot plans and schemes and covenants and contracts that was we would may have entered into. We reject, rebuke, we rebuke in the name of Jesus. And now, Lord God, we call on those things that you've predestined before uh, concerning us how you've seen us father god i thank you for resetting us to look more like the, the daughter that you've called us to be the daughter that you've intended us to be father god we believe you we receive it by faith that you're working things out inside of us that you're ordering our steps that you're renewing us that you're teaching us that you're training us i thank you that um Though, though, though things in us may seem like problems, I thank you, you're working all things together for our good because we are called according to your purpose. So we give you praise and honor and bless your holy name. I thank you, Lord God, that the word will go into the hearts of your, late, your women and they will see how wonderful they are in Christ Jesus. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray and everyone says amen. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you guys. Have a great one. Love you guys.